Hello, everybody. This is Nicole with Locker the Econ Sellers Podcast. And I have with me today my co host, my partner in crime, Kelly the Econ Mom Ward. And Kelly and I come to you every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time to share with you e commerce news, tips, and more. Today, our tip is to talk about what tools we use in our business, what resources. You know, this will be some of them, it won't be all of them, but hopefully, it'll give you a good idea if you're wanting to get into the e commerce space. So with that, Kelly, what have you been up to? Well, we did a um, martial arts clinic this weekend. So we're all thoroughly worn out, tired, and sore from that. You know, with the heat down here, it's not fun. No. And so, yeah. (laughs) I agree with you. But, you know, it was was fun doing doing some of the classes there was some stuff as there was like a wrestling thing and i just mostly watched that one because my back was going no (laughs) no we're not doing that we're not doing that well i have spent a lot of time you know doing research for tax uh tax free weekend trying to pull together what are we going to buy what do we need to buy what do the teachers need the sad reality is is that the majority of the school teachers did not give us a list when they're in high school they do really like i don't know i feel like they suck at getting that list out to parents so here i am pulling up every single one of his classes trying to figure out what resources he's going to need only one teacher and you know they rotate only one teacher sent an email all the others did not send an email <laughs> This is not helping me. So anyway, so I am um, trying to figure out what they need and making sure I set aside money uh, to be able to get anything extra that they come up with. So outside of that, just trying to recover from our first week of school. Uh, We actually started school on Wednesday of last week, and um, we haven't even had a full week of school, but it has been a nightmare. (laughs) Oh, the joy of kids. Yeah, it's been a rough, rough start to the school year. So I hope that this week is better. I don't miss that at all. My prayers this week is better. So anyway, with that, I am going to turn it over to you, Kelly, and let them share with you the news while I pull up some news on my side. So take it away. All right. There's not a whole lot of news so you're gonna have to search quick um we'll start with michaels everyone's like michaels yeah michaels we talked about earlier this year to have them like a where you can sell like craft supplies and stuff they've launched a handmade marketplace called maker place it went on beta um starting august 3rd the crafters and artisans can sell their goods on there but they also can they can earn revenue through affiliate um, sales so you know if they reckon you know they can recommend certain fabrics or supplies and stuff and earn revenue that way and they can also re- um, do it by teaching um, classes on zoom they have like people you know like sign up for classes and stuff where they can teach you know other people who want to learn how to do things and they will also, anyone who sells and on there, um, will get discounts to for their supplies if they buy them there at Michael's. Okay. So if you are a, in the handmade marketplace, look, you know, might be that interesting. I had I sent all that information to my daughter-in-law because she just recently started. She's had an Etsy store, but now she's recently opened up a Shopify store to sell her. Um, she crochets so she's uh nice yes yeah, so yeah next is amazon amazon's um their seller profiled prime is going to reopen to new merchants um starting in october the, it's like a free 30-day trial that they sellers will be have will be on and they must meet certain requirements to stay on with a seller familiar fulfilled prime of course Yes, uh, like you got to have over a hundred seller fulfilled prime sales within that 30 days. They don't want people who are just going to sell one or two items. They want, you know, sellers to be selling a lot of items and they have to keep like a certain underneath uh, number and such. And you can find more uh, information in the cent- seller central. But there will be, and Amazon will be introducing a 2% additional fee for any of the ASINs 
that will be um, enrolled in that self-fulfilled program. So you have to think about those extra fees when you're putting your price in. They also announced they're going to have what they call Prime Big Deal Days in October. They haven't announced any date. Um, they will that they said they're going to have that in October, kind of like a the prime days that they had a couple months you know was last month yeah um, yep so they're doing another one in october but they have announced dates you know you know they're gonna wait till like two weeks before or something so if you have if you're selling on there and you want to you know better start going ahead and get that inventory in there i'm going to talk about a little about tiktok you know you know tiktok's really you know big with like the college age and kids and high school age and a lot of what they're influencing is how kids decorate their college dorm rooms yeah. and such. Um, and, you know, many kids are looking to stay on budget. So, and with the closing down of Bed Bath and, was it? Beyond. Bed Bath and Beyond. I'm like, that's not that I'm, th- I'm thinking of like, no, that's Bath not. Bath Body Works. Isn't- but, you know, a lot of people were using their 20% off coupons and stuff. So a lot of people might be going to Home Goods or trying to find other ways to stay on budget and still decorate their dorm rooms. So if you could find, if you, you know, sell that kind of such stuff, you know, look. You know, as a way to um, see what the influencers are saying on there and what kids are looking for to decorate their dorms and see so you, you can jump on that. Well, you know, Overstock took over Bed Bath & Beyond, but yes. Yeah. Rebranded, but yes, always. All right, uh, Mercari. Mercari's running a sweepstakes for back-to-campus shoppers. Um, they're giving away six $500 shopping sprees in uh, select categories that nice. says between August 8th to August 21st okay. and to get into this to get into this sweepstakes you have to buy s- something in one of these um, categories okay um, so the categories are women's men's and kids clothing handbags electronic sports home office and arts and crafts I think it other ways. If okay. you're, you can, you know, if you want to get in that sweepstakes yet, yeah, you can go shopping and buy and get that sweepstakes. But if you're a seller, maybe that's the categories you need to focus on to list. You know, maybe you won't, maybe you're not, you don't, you're not going to win that $500 shopping spree, but maybe you'll earn money because people are shopping more in those categories to get into the shopping spree sweepstakes. There you go. And then one more is Etsy. Just a little bit. And they're launching a new gift and baby gift registry. They have a wedding registry. Um, already baby gift registry. And you won't know if your item's been, been put on the uh, registry. Mm-hmm. But they will show any traffic that is generated from the registry on your traffic report. Okay. So, all right. Mm-hmm. Every, is that everything? That's everything. All right. Well, Kelly, that was not a little bit of news. You had some good pieces. All right. So, I'm going to share what news I really do have only three pieces. Three pieces. I'm slipping here on tracking down news. So, thank you. Kelly kind of filled in the gap there because I only have three pieces of news, guys. Then we're going to go to the slide. So, let me. Go ahead and share. So the first one comes to us from The Verb. And The Verb is talking about Amazon is dropping dozens of its in-house brands that you didn't even know that they owned. So Amazon Basics is sticking around, but some of the other brands are not. Again, you can check out this article from The Verge, not Verb, from The Verge. I said Verb. Anyway, <laughs> um, they're talking about several of the brands that they're getting rid of. So they're going to keep Amazon Basics and I believe Amazon Essentials, but there's some others that are private label uh, that Amazon owned. I think a lot of this is flushing out from that lawsuit. But again, you can get into it. It's going to link to the Wall Street Journal um, antitrust scrutiny, you know. You may have to have a subscription to the Wall Street Journal to dig into it further, 
or you can just do some more Google searches to find out more about what happened with the antitrust kind of um, the lawsuit that they're, you know, we're settling. So they're getting rid of some of their brands. Uh, they are under Amazon, but they don't say Amazon. So this is good for those private label sellers that were so frustrated because Amazon had all your statistical data and they could jump onto your listing, which is bad. It's not funny. It's very bad. But um, this is sort of good for those sellers. And maybe they can reclaim some of their spots or maybe they've just left the whole you know, marketplace altogether. So uh, the next one comes to us from today, which of course is on NBC. And Amazon announces a second Prime Day, which is what Kelly was talking about before. They did a second Prime Day last year and a little bit. In 2021, they didn't really do that so much. And then last year, they did have a second Prime Day. They're anticipating that it's going to be somewhere close to October the um, 11th and 12th. So what you need to do as a seller is that you need to start now to prepare for Prime Day. You need to start now to prepare for of the, you know, ordering extra inventory. It's like in if you think of it as a pre uh, Black Friday kind of opportunity to get a boost in sales. So now Amazon is giving you and all, along with all the other platforms, let's just say that it's giving you the opportunity to have a boost in sales in July, a boost in sales in October before Prime Day, a boost in sales, of course, for Prime Day. And then that boost, that last boost right before Christmas, you need to write these down and put together a game plan of making sure that you have sufficient inventory that you have sufficient uh you know you've got all of your if you're going to offer ads if i mean you know put together ads if you're going to do promotions uh what you're going to do to build your list or if you're going to use these opportunities to build your list and to attract your audience or nail down your audience so again amazon announces a second prime day which is what kelly talked about earlier and right now it's going to be around October the 11th and 12th. But again, they'll nail down and announce the final days. What you need to do as a seller is start getting ready. Now it's August, start ordering extra inventory, start putting together your game plan and your strategy. And then the next article comes from us from CNN. I thought this was a great article because there's a whole bunch of people that are Taylor Swift fans. And so Taylor Swift fans, there's like this bracelet that people are getting. They're buying them on Etsy shops. So Etsy is getting a huge boost <laughs> right now from Taylor Swift's shows and her whole era's tour because of these bracelets that are just literally those white bead letter numbers and then some other little tunk, uh, tokens. Um, there's not anything significant about them. You can make these, like you could run to Walmart right now. We have two of these uh, things with the beads, with the letters in them and the different color beads. Like we have two of them. We could start making bracelets if we wanted to. I could have Nicholas make them and put them up. I'm just saying, because we already have all the material but during the summertime to work on his, uh, it's like an occupational therapy um type of exercise to work on his ability to focus and his, you know, his dexterity. We bead, you know, we put stuff on beads, um, on string so that that way he has the opportunity to work on those skills. And then we talk about, oh, okay. Um, Nicholas, you're going to do blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, all the way down. And you need to put like 20 of them on or 30 of them. So it forces them to have to co uh, count. It forces them to have to focus. It forces them to have to do a bunch of stuff. And then, you know, tying it at the end so that that way, again, you're still working on those skills. So from an OT standpoint, like the beads are perfect. The fact that people are making a boatload of money right now at Etsy is like, Shh, I need to throw up a picture of Nicholas making some beads. <laughs> Put it up on TikTok and just, you know, have him make some beads because we already do this. We do it in the summertime. We do it all the time. So I'm just saying it's an opportunity. But if you haven't checked it out, you definitely can go to CNN. They're having all these bead parties. People are making these beads, selling these beads, and we make them. We literally make these in our house. Don't be surprised if I throw some up. They'll be like, yeah, these were made by Nicholas because we have all of this stuff. All of it. But anyway. So I thought it was an interesting article and kudos to all those people who are putting up listings on Etsy 
for the beads and congratulations to all the sales and traffic and a huge thank you to Taylor Swift. So what this means is that, again, paying attention to trends, which is something I talk about all the time. If you pay attention to the trends, you will never know what might come up. This is a simple one. Like you can go out and buy these little bead kits with the strings and all those. I think we have three of them in the house. You can buy these bead kits and use them, uh, you know, to make money right now. Instead of buying an, a lot of different inventory, you don't have to buy a lot of inventory. So that's my point. I can remember early in my journey when Nikki kind of made a bunch of money. I can't remember if it was Rihanna or Beyonce back in the day. And then I piggybacked off of something, some idea she had. And I, you know, someone else that was famous, like had something like some earrings or a scarf or a bracelet or something. Can't remember sunglasses. But anyway, the point is paying attention to the trends can actually yield you some cash. Is this trend, how long is this trend going to last? I don't know. I mean, like Taylor Swift is about to do her worldwide tour. So she's already done the United States. So I mean, this bracelet thing could go on for a little while longer. So there's an opportunity there. But again, it's only if you're paying attention when the windows hit. Anything you want to add to that, Kelly? No, um, I think uh, they have those little beads and stuff, even at a dollar store. Oh, yeah. Yep. You can get the kits at the dollar store. They're not as big. I have a huge one. So I'm like, let me go get that and make Nicholas do some stuff. All right. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to transition over to tips. So this is where Kelly and I will talk about some tips in our e-commerce journey and our e-commerce businesses. And to this week's tip is tools that we use in our business. It's not just tools. It might be websites or resources or whatever, but these are things that we use in our business to help us either with our operations or with certain activities that we do in our business. And so we want to share that with you. So if you have not already subscribed to the Ecom Sellers Podcast, please share this out with a friend. Let somebody else know about the Ecom Sellers Podcast and tune in for our next episode. We always do these on uh, Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Kelly so she can start with the first one. So list perfectly. This is what I use for listing. I love it. I uh, even figured out how to do it so I can take pictures with my phone and get it directly on the list perfectly. And I don't have to worry about downloading the pictures from my phone to the computer because that's just too much work. Yep. So, but I can um, do all this and then I make my listing at list perfectly and then I send it out to the sites I want to list it on. I don't think you do Amazon, but I don't sell there anymore. Um, like eBay, Etsy, you can do Facebook Marketplace, you can do Instagram, Depop, Grailed, all the, you know, these Mercari and such. And when I love it, you know, and then when I sell something, I just go and say, so it sold and it pulls up all the listings and delete and takes them off there. So I don't double sell it. Yeah. Um, so I use List Perfectly as well. I've been using it now since the first time I think you well, since they were on our summit, I got my subscription. Then our first, uh, I think it was like our fourth summit that they were on. But in any case, um, I have used List Perfectly ever since. My team in India are the ones that use it. They We actually do the same thing Kelly does, which is you add the listing to the List Perfectly catalog. And then from the catalog, you can push it out to the different platforms. I do like List Perfectly. No, they are not connected to Amazon nor Walmart, but they are connected to several other sites. And so, you know, we'll make sure that we have our affiliate link in the comments so that you can sign up if you want to. This is a great window of time to learn a new tool before you get into Q4. I would say from now to the end of August, this is that window to learn a new tool, get familiar with it, get comfortable with it so that that way you can go into Q4. And I always start Q4 in September. You can go into Q4 very comfortable, relaxed and used to the tool. Yes. I mean, there's other you can research listing tools. There's like Vindu and I think there was that flip flipper or flips or something. And one that, shop or one spot or something like that, they have yeah. a listing tool as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just, you know, Enlist Perfectly does have, it does have a fee, um, but don't forget any fees, subscriptions, stuff are tax deductible. But you 
have different levels you can be and they have at the higher level I think that they have a new thing on their thing where the higher level uh, one it automatically takes off the items when it sells yeah so you should check it out I think it's worth it and maybe we'll do I'll do a uh, econ planning session where we actually go into Lisper maybe over the shoulder to show you the tool and how we use the tool because it is a great tool all right the next one is my e-commerce planner. I actually do use it. I know Kelly doesn't use it, but I do because it helps me from a strategic standpoint, figure out what I'm going to be sourcing each month and each quarter and what I need to prepare for. So I gave you the example earlier of preparing for Prime Day because you're going to have a second Prime Day in October. So strategically, if I were going to reverse engineer that, if the prime day is in October, then you have a cutoff date in which you want to make sure that your listings are active and or your inventory is sent into Amazon. That cutoff date might be September the 10th. So that might mean backing up again, reverse engineering this from September the 10th all the way to August the 10th. That might be when I order my inventory or do my keyword research or do my inventory research or analysis to figure out what I need to order and then place my orders and then get the listings, you know, prepared, scrub them. Maybe if it's something I'm reactivating a listing. But again, that's only because of planning and because I plan, I am more effective when it comes to that second prime day. Even if you're not selling on Amazon, all the platforms are going to get a boost from these sales. The other thing that's happening in October is what is it? Uh, it's not President's Day. It's Veterans. Is it Veterans Day? Columbus Day or Indigenous People Day, whatever they want to call it. There's, there's <laughs> yeah, Columbus. Yeah. Indigenous People Day, Columbus Day. And so, again, that month was already going to get a little bit of a bump because of that holiday. And then because Halloween, of, yeah, Halloween. <laughs> Halloween's happening at the end of October, but I'm talking about when it comes to that timing of when that actual event is happening, Columbus Day or Indigenous People Day and uh, Prime Day, like they are right there in that window that's right next to Prime Day. And so that's going to be a boost. And then you're going to, of course, be able to take off the rest of the month, not take off, but the rest of the month is going to skyrocket because you got all of those Halloween sales going on. But if you really want to get a boost mid October, I always re I reverse engineer it and start with the planner and then back into what do I need to do in order to make sure I'm ready. So become planner. Pirate ship. You heard me talk about pirate ship, but this is a great way to save money shipping internet, using cubic shipping rates to ship heavier, smaller stuff. It's free to use. Even told people who don't sell, maybe they're trying to ship something to a friend over in another country or, or to their family, you know, they, it's just a small box that might be a little heavy. I tell, I tell everybody about it. Save some money by shipping with pirate ship. It, you know, and you can um, have it so that it automatically pulls your sales from eBay and Etsy and a few other sites so that you don't have you can just do it all one place. There you go. I use pirate ship as well. I have keywords everywhere. So keywords everywhere allows me to be able to do research on words, titles, description, just doing some keyword research. It's a great tool. You can pay $10 for a year and you get 100,000 searches. So again, you know, you can use Google Trends, you can use Google um, other types of tools to be able to do keyword research. But um, I do like keywords everywhere. It's a great tool um, and it allows me to be able to do some quick keyword research out there. Canva. Canva is great. I use it um, to like say I have a double-sided t-shirt that has really cool graphics on both sides and I want to catch a customer's eye by showing both sides. I can make um, photo collages in Canva. Um, show that in my picture and you know some other sellers they just have one side showing and you have both sides which might be might grab your seller customer's eyes better. I also use Canva for making um, logos and like the there's like a headline thing um, artwork for your stores. Yeah. I use Canva to help put together bundles. I did uh, both my bundles classes, holiday bundle classes 
that is what I use to be able to drop it into. You can also drop it into another tool we're going to talk about a little bit later. But yeah, Canva is a great tool to be able to put together all your images together for your bundle. And so if you want to show all of the pieces um, together in one giant cluster photo, but you don't have all the pieces in one place or, you know, when you take a picture with your you know, your box, I have that Amazon box, Amazon basics box, and it doesn't, you know, come out really well. You can literally superimpose pictures one on top of the other to make it look like it's a bundle put together. So I love Canva for that. E-Rank. So if you sell on Etsy, E-Rank is a great tool to be able to help you to do research, um, to help you to figure out how many sellers or how many stores are selling a specific product or what is the phrase or words uh, long tail keywords that are the most searched and most saturated and which ones are not. Um, I like E-Rank. They do have a free version. They also have a paid version. Canva has a free version and a paid version. Again, both of those tools and they are both extremely affordable. Um, E-Rank I think is cheaper than Canva, but they're both extremely affordable. So if you are selling uh, on Etsy, if you are selling uh, print on demand, I would encourage you to look at an E-Rank account. Anything else you want to add to that, Kelly? No, I, I have one. You can look at, see how popular, you know, if you're using a keyword that is really being searched a lot or not a lot. So you, you be able to better u utilize the keywords that are, you know, for that item. I do like the tool. Photo Room. I love Photo Room's an app. You can there's a free version, and when you take use it, you'll have a little watermark. I will say with List Perfectly, they are with they also use Photo Room, and you get a certain amount of background removing with the use of List Perfectly to help your items. Photo Room also uh, looks really. They have like some cool background, different background. I know a lot of the guys that I um, know, YouTube and such, they love the, the background thing now so they can make a, especially if they're selling their vintage hats and stuff, they can make these cool backgrounds, which really grab people because everyone puts a blank white background or such and just there's pops more, especially on sites like Depop and Grailed and stuff. So, yeah. 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 I use Photo Room as well. I actually got a, like, I don't know, a two year subscription before I realized that it was already in list perfectly. I was a little mad about that. But anyway, I think at the time, because I think a Photo Room was added to list perfectly, I feel like it was last year or the end of middle of last year, beginning of last year, or the end of 2021. But anyway, I had already had like a two year or three year subscription that I paid for in advance. And I was really kind of mad about that. <laughs> Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Lens. So I use Google Sheets to do some tracking, some accounting, some uh, different types of things I want to track in spreadsheet form and Excel spreadsheets. I love Google Sheets for that. Google Slides, I use Google Slides like I do Canva in some cases when I'm making bundles and I want all the images pulled together, I can put them on Google Slides. I actually learned how to do uh, cluster photos in Google Slides before I learned how to do them in Canva. So um, in any case, and then, sorry, my brother came and interrupted me. And then Google Lens, the I use Google Lens. Well, you know, I use Google Lens more for scanning stuff than I do anything else. What do you use Google Lens for, Kelly? Sometimes I'm out of thrift stores and I see something that's interesting, but I don't really know how to describe it correctly. eBay and such to be able to look it up. I use Google Lens to search for it. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Research or look for things. So yeah, Google Lens is a great one. Um, I also use my Amazon app to search for things too, but Google Lens, you can do a lot of searches with it. So Oh, Kelly doesn't know any of these. <laughs> no, I don't really know. No. <laughs> I'm going All right, so I'll take this one real quick. So, <laughs> right cream, right sonic niches, ChatGPT, and Google Bark. All of these are AI type tools that you can use to help you with product descriptions, product titles, uh, keywords to help you improve your listing quality. So, the quality of your listing. Now, 
are some of these AI features already embedded in some of the existing listing tools? Absolutely. Meaning if you create a listing on Amazon, it may, you know, certain times it'll have a recommendation or same thing with eBay or it'll rephrase it or it will say, use this word instead or whatever. So a lot of the platforms are starting to incorporate AI before it's all said and done. A significant number of them will. You know, if you want to keep the text that you originally had, you can definitely do that. But um, you always want to read whatever the AI spits out. But I do use uh, these tools to help me with titles, descriptions, keyword research, and things like that and to help things to pop. And if you are sharing those listings onto platforms like TikTok or Instagram, like Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts or Facebook Reels or Facebook Stories, then again, this can help you with the titling of the post so that that way you can get more eyeballs on it. I will say I did use AI was it this in the last week. I was on on the eBay. I was listing a book and it said use AI. So I was like, okay, I you know, if I don't like it, I could t- t- take it off and it brought up the description of what the book was about. I'm like, "Oh, that's cool cuz I don't want to write that all out or copy and paste it. You know, I can just do that for the description of the book and then I describe the condition of the book in the you know underneath it so well there you go Kelly I'm gonna let you have this next one I don't know what it is oh there you go (laughs) of course the Amazon app eBay app and the Walmart app so you can you know uh, with your you know when you're out looking you know does this item actually sell you can see how many are there and you can even look see and see how fast is it selling is it something that's going to sit or is it something going to sell quickly you can see the different prices on the different site and you can go even and look at the reviews and decide oh this has some really bad reviews i don't want to sell something that's going to have a bad review because they might come back on me about it even though the item's bad it's not me you know i didn't make it you know but (laughs) so there's so many different things that you can use these apps for. You can need to see what's sold, what you need to ship out, and such. And I love that. Um, and when I say the Am- when I wrote Amazon app, I do mean the Amazon buying app and the selling app. Um, because on eBay, you know, there's not a selling app. It's an M- eBay app. And then the same, same thing with Walmart. Like Walmart doesn't have a separate seller app like Amazon does right now. But... The great thing is, is that on the Amazon buying app, you can still see the sales rank. You can still see how many sellers are on it. You can still see the pricing. You can see a lot of stuff. Definitely check out the apps. They can help you shorten your product research. And I'll let you have this one too, Kelly. All right, YouTube. You're like, YouTube, well, there's so many different ways. Yes, I. that's how I talk to a lot of different resellers, a lot of thrifters like me and learn this, you know, learn. I learned so much from them. How they take pic, what their processes are, how they pick, take pictures, how they like to go sourcing, and sometimes we just sit there. And there's days that we're having listing shows, and they're listing, and I'm listing, and everyone's listing, and we're just shooting the breeze, talking about everything, about our dogs, to what we found that week, or or. And then we turn and someone might have, hey, does anyone know what this is? Or, hey, I, I know so-and-so, you, you like to sell this stuff. What's this? You know, and we learn from each other. That's one great way. I've learned how to clean certain things or how to fix certain things or and such so that, you know, for my, you know, just, you know, YouTube just a big, you know, wealth of knowledge. There's a lot of great info. And you can also see, pro- I mean, you can do product research on YouTube, believe it or mm-hmm. not. Yes, I agree. Ping Farm. Uh, I use Ping Farm. I have my VAs you ping- use Ping Farm to create backlinks to our listings right after we create them. That helps to increase the presence of the listing and to help it to index faster on the internet. And hopefully, sometimes that can also help you to get more traffic to your listings or get more eyeballs on your listings so that that way you can get more sales. The more people that can find your listing or that sees your listing, the greater the chances that you will get sales. The harder it is to find or see your listing, then the slower it is your item might move or sell. Now, you know, getting good at the keywords and the title of 
who this listing really is for, who's the avatar that would buy this particular product is always important. And that doesn't change any of this. But what I do want to say is that, you know, as we get closer and closer to Q4, Ping Farm could be one of your hidden secret weapons to help you to get more eyeballs on listings. So my reseller genie, um, I was a GoDaddy bookkeeping lover. I loved it, but they're no more. We're all very still sad about that. We're still recovering from that, even though it's been over a year. My reseller genie is a bookkeeping um, program. It was made by someone who actually was made by her husband, but it start you know, the person who's the, the, the husband and wife couple, they had the wife had a store on Poshmark and she wanted to find a way to be able to do the bookkeeping and her husband i believe was a accountant or something and they made a little program and a lot of the resellers went to this because it's not big they're not big enough don't need quickbooks but they needed something so they're able to get their their, their stuff pulled in from ebay you had to have to manually enter a lot of stuff so i'll um i'm not really good at keeping up with all my bookkeeping that's like if I could have anything for my company, it'd be a bookkeeper. So I, I don't have to worry about it. I don't want, I, I'm not, I don't like to worry about all those numbers and stuff. And, you know, on top of my nursing job and just listing is all I really, you know, I just want to do the listing and shopping and shipping and have someone else do that. <laughs> There you go, Kelly. I'm Chrome extension. So I use uh, Jungle Scout, Helium 10. There's a couple other Chrome extensions, but they didn't come to me as quickly. So I had to just kind of write down these two. But they have some free Chrome extensions out there that you can install. There's a lot of cool Chrome extensions to help you to do product research, to help you do keyword research, do product comparisons, all that other stuff. So um, I encourage you to check those out, especially if you're starting on this journey. Get the free stuff first. You can always upgrade later. Um, to allow you to kind of get a little bit of traction in your business and get things going. And then when you're ready to scale, you're when you're profitable, up, upgrade to the paid versions and use that to help you to, you know, um, excel in your business. Just know that when you do use these tools, there are several other thousands of sellers that are using the tools. In some cases, 20,000, 16,000. I don't know what the real final numbers are, but those numbers have been tossed around. And so that means that the results you're getting, there's going to be someone else that's going to get the same results. Not that we're all selling the same thing because we're not. But the point is that when you do use these kind of tools, they are used by several other sellers as well. So the goal that you should always have at the end of the day is to get better at being able to do product research, keyword research, titling organically as much as possible, because then that's the uniqueness of you. Figure out the products and the niches where you are like the blue whale in that space, or there's not a bunch of others that are also selling that particular product. I think it's a blue ocean. Anyway, whatever the saying is, um, <laughs> try to be that person um, selling the same thing everybody else sells. There's nothing wrong with that. There's always going to be people that are going to buy marshmallows. I mean, like a bunch of thousands and thousands of marshmallows. And it's okay if you're one of those sellers. But again, at the end of the day, the goal is to try and gain some traction and build your business and scale it in a way that allows you to sort of be on your own and get a boatload of sales uh, naturally and organically. So these tools are great ways to get started and then you can scale from there. So if you have not subscribed to the Ecom Sellers Podcast, we do invite you to subscribe to the Ecom Sellers Podcast. We want you to share this out with, with a friend. We'd love for you to like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can go to Ecom Sellers Podcast right now to subscribe to our YouTube channel and tune in for another episode of the Ecom Sellers Podcast, where we do this every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. So with that, I do want to invite everyone to come and hang out with us on our monthly recurring online e-commerce meetup. We used to have monthly meetups all the time, and we were starting up our in-person meetups. I'm working on my endurance so I can walk and talk, but uh, we are having a monthly e-commerce online meetup 
It's the fourth uh, Saturday of every month at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can go to SWIY.co forward slash online ecom sellers meetup. Again, SWIY.co forward slash online ecom sellers meetup. We invite you to come hang out. Let's talk about our business. Let's talk about what challenges we're running into. We're not going to focus on any one thing. There are some people that only want to focus on Amazon, and that's perfectly fine. There are others that just want to focus on eBay, and that's perfectly fine. We want to talk about a little bit of everything. If you're selling on Shopify, we want you to come hang out with us. If you're selling on Walmart, we want you to come hang out with us. Selling on Amazon, come hang out with us. Etsy, come hang out with us. Let's talk about our business. It's, you know, it's an opportunity to mastermind with other sellers in your area and or online and maybe just maybe you'll connect with somebody that resonates with you so sign up it's free and it's our monthly recurring online e-commerce meetup um, in addition to that we do have webinar wednesdays it's also free it's coming up this wednesday our topic uh starting your own candy vending business so you can go to bit.ly forward slash start vending. Again, bit.ly forward slash start vending, all lowercase. It's at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So join us as we talk about starting a candy vending business. For those who don't know, I'm actually getting ready to restart our candy busy vending business. My son is going to be graduating and I want to have a business that he can run on his own. So in addition to Nicholas making beads, anyway. For those who don't know, we also have the Mystery Shopping 101 course that is starting uh, this week, next at the end of this week, next week. Um, and so you want to go to SWIY.co forward slash Mystery Shopping. Again, SWIY.co forward slash Mystery Shopping. It is a three-day course. We're going to cover everything Mystery Shopping related. I have talked about the fact that I'm using Mystery Shopping to help my son in his development and comprehension challenges that he has because he is becoming an adult and I need him to be able to be observant and be aware and ask really good questions and pay attention to instructions. These are all skills he's going to need in a job. These are also skills that he's going to need on his own, living independently, forcing him to think through things. And so I think Mr. Shepard is a great way to help your kids sort of pay attention to stuff. They got to learn how to fill out forms on their own. Why not? They got to learn how to do a bunch of stuff, open up a bank account on their own. They got to learn how to buy a car, find their first apartment. And so I think Mr. Shopping is a great way to do that. And uh, so my son is going to be going through that journey along with this course, which should be a whole lot of fun. Go to SWIY.co forward slash mystery shopping right now to sign up. The class starts at the end of this week, I believe. And last but not least, we do invite you to come check out our paid surveys, focus groups, clinical trials, uh, market research session. Um, it is also a three-day course. It starts uh, next week or this week as well. You can go to SWIY.co forward slash paid surveys. Again, SWIY.co forward slash paid surveys. This was one of the ways that I bridged the gap. Uh, when I was spending a lot of money on speech, occupational therapy, ABA, and alternative therapies, I would do paid surveys. I'd make at least $300 a week was always my goal. And I always met that. And this is just a great way for you to get some extra spending cash. It does require some time commitment. Um, so if you're looking to make more than that, then there's definitely a way you can turn it into a full-time gig. But for me, I just needed some extra money to bridge different expenses every week. They were quick. They were easy in most cases. And I definitely recommend it. So go to SWIY.co forward slash paid surveys right now to sign up for this course as well. So with that, um, that is it for right now. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. So my name is Nicole Whitlock. And I'm Kelly the Ecom Mom Ward. And Kelly and I come to you every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time to talk with you about e-commerce news, tips, and more. We hope that you will join us next Tuesday for another episode of the Ecom Sellers Podcast. And we will say goodbye for now. Bye.